I'm joined by the political journalist Ava Santina, talk to me contributor Paul Rowan Adrian, and talk to me presenter Richard Tice. Okay, well, welcome to all of you. Let's just segue to a story that's really taken off in this country, Richard. This is the mother jailed for taking abortion pills way after the legal limit. She's a mother of three. She received abortion pill medication uh, following a remote consultation during the COVID pandemic where she lied about how far uh, pregnant she was and she's now been jailed for this. What do you think of this case? Look, I, th I mean, it's a tragedy and you can't imagine what she was going through. She knew how pregnant she was, but of course, what many people are forgetting, it was seven weeks into lockdown. Everybody is, is varying forms of terrified. She can't get any face-to-face uh, -face consultation mm. whatsoever. And she's made a decision that most people would say is, is awful. Um, but really, a two-year sentence, actually 28-month sentence, I, what's the, why not suspend it? You've got to have a deterrent. Mm. But what's it going to achieve locking her up for 14 months Think of the impact on her three children, and you might be surprised I don't take a sort of a, a different view on this. I am surprised, but, but then actually, actually I... I bumped into Ava last night, and I was all fired up about it, thinking, oh, why, why are the liberal left coming out so vehemently, this is all outrageous, given how far pregnant she was and what she did? But actually, the more I've looked into it, the more I've heard people talk, the more I've come around to your way, which is imprisoning her for two years, but she has three kids given the circumstances, it seems to me too draconian. I mean, even from a fiscal perspective, it's not good for the taxpayer to put her away. I mean, right. look, she's no threat to the public and she's not going to do it again. You know, you, she's not going to get any kind of retribution by going inside. But look, the whole thing for me has sort of been like a witch hunt. And I think it has been not you, I'm not talking about you, mm. but I think a lot of people have sort of jumped on it and used I've it. Actually not, I've actually not deliberately said anything no, or even tweeted anything happen. because I think it's a real minefield. Mm. And I do believe in a woman's right to choose what to do with her body. We have some of the most lax compared to the rest of Europe and America uh, abortion laws as it is. But the problem here is she did almost go full term. And many people do feel very strongly about that, in, even in this country, about this. And they also feel, well, what's the point in having a law with a punishment for that law if you can break it with impunity and get no punishment? Well, I'll push back on you slightly and say we actually don't have that, that easy access. Actually, if you're living in Scotland or you're living in parts of the north, it's extremely difficult I mean, on to term access. limit being 24 weeks, mm -hmm. you know, Poland is complete... You can Poland, it. you can't have a legal abortion at all. And actually, a lot of women are dying in Poland. I know. Poland is an ex no, no, you're, I think you're misunderstanding yeah. me. I support a woman's right to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that there have to be limits and there are legal limits. And the question then, Paula, becomes, well, what do you do as punishment if somebody breaks them so horrendously, she clearly has and admits she has? Mm. What do you do? Well, I think the problem that a lot of people have in commentating on this is whether this actually requires a punishment. Was this actually a crime? Now, legally speaking, of course it was. Um, and the judge couldn't... Uh, grant her a suspended sentence because she didn't plead guilty. The first in the, time. Exactly. But he did say, didn't he, that if she, if she had pled guilty, he would have suspended, given a suspended sentence first time. So exactly. that's a, like a, a double deterrent factor. Well, uh, and it's built in within the sentencing guidelines. The judge acted appropriately and nobody is denying that. Mm. Um, and so what I want to ask is, where was the public interest in terms of this? crime and i don't think there was what we have is a tragedy mm. that i hope is going to mean that we now start to relook at what was a statute book of over 1861 before women could vote uh, we knew little in terms of science not only medically but also psychologically it, it's now time to look at this again clearly and there must have been massive extenuating circumstances because of the pandemic you couldn't see anybody face to face if she had seen someone face to face, she wouldn't have got the pills, I suspect, because people would have said, hang on, you're way, way yeah, beyond I think that's 24 very, weeks. That, that to yeah. me was what I thought. And so there were massive extenuating circumstances. And there would have been counselling provided for her. What a lot of people don't understand is that it's actually not unusual to go five months, six months and not realise that you're pregnant. Mm. It's a shock for a lot of people, but actually it's not that unusual. Um, and so that kind of resource was not available to her. And I don't know why that wasn't taken into account. All right. Let's have a quick word about Boris Johnson. Is he finished? Never write him off. Uh, he might be finished within the Conservative Party for a fair while, but never write him off. He's just... He, in a sense, 
You should never write off Donald Trump. When you've got these huge personalities, you just don't know how they're going to reinvent themselves. And I suspect he will be the same. Ava? Well, I mean, Rich is the perfect person to ask, because I think we're all wondering. I mean, Nigel Farage had quite a lot to say about, you know, this possible comeback with Boris Johnson. I mean, you're the party that they would, you know, who would host them. So I'm quite interested. Are they coming mm. back? They're, well, not, they're not coming back, because we know... Would you take him, though? Would you take Boris Johnson? Uh, we have very significant differences of policy. <laughs> that wasn't a no. Mm. We have very significant differences of policy. Let's put it like that. Was okay. that a yes or no? It's, it's Get a, off it's the fence, a, It's a ties. fact. It's a question of fact. It's a fundamental But we do, we do all to. have, the three of us have, to protect the Brexit legacy. Because at the moment, it's being trashed by a useless existing government that doesn't believe in it. All right, Paula, final he's, word to you. He's, he's Boris not, Johnson, toast or not toast? Toast. He's not going to get the funding. The backers have gone. You know, the last person that everyone condemned repeatedly throughout his career as toast and never coming back? Winston Churchill. It's a horrible thought that you could compare to no. Boris Johnson and Piers Winston Morgan. Churchill. But he did write a very good That's book exactly about Winston Churchill. I think Boris should go and write populist history like he intended to. He should finish his Shakespeare book and do all that kind of stuff. He's actually good at those books. I just don't want him running the country again. Mm. Sorry. Sorry. Well, he's good at anything that stuffs money in his mouth, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on that bombshell, thank you very much, Pat. I appreciate it.